Right, so let's go back to ventricular hypertrophy for a second. Right, so we can actually get to this via another route, right, this secret route we haven't talked about yet. And to introduce this, I want you to imagine playing with a pump water gun. Right, so when you pump that water gun, the first five or six times you pump it, it it's not so hard, right? But after five, six, seven times, it becomes more difficult to pump. And why is that? The reason is you've built up pressure in that system, so now you're pumping against that pressure. It makes it more difficult to pump. Well, imagine a case where we have high pressure here in the aorta. Right? We have pressure that's built up, and now the ventricle is going to have to pump against that pressure in order to get blood out into the body. Well, the body's response to that, excuse me, the heart's response to that, is that it's going to hypertrophy in order to deal with this chronic pressure. Let's just say chronic pressure. Okay, it's chronic high pressure, but we kind of ran out of room here. So with this chronic build up in pressure, the ventricle is going to have to pump harder, and in order to do that, it's going to hypertrophy, right? which can lead eventually, if it's not checked, it can lead to pretty severe heart failure. So we have one more thing we need to talk about that can lead to the buildup of chronic pressure here that's going to cause us to go down this whole long chain of events that's eventually going to get us to dilated cardiomyopathy. That's called aortic valve stenosis. Okay, so what is aortic valve stenosis? Well, first of all, here is the aortic valve. Okay, it controls the movement of blood from the left ventricle up into the aorta. Now, imagine what happens when that left ventricle is trying to push up against a valve that won't open all the way, that's narrowed, right? You're not going to get as much blood moving through that narrowed valve. And when that happens, some of that blood stays back. But more importantly, it presents a situation where the left ventricle is having to push against this blood that can't quite make it through this valve. So that's going to cause pressure to back up onto this muscle, right? And over a long period of time, the muscle is going to hypertrophy so that it's able to push blood through this broken valve, right? So that's how aortic valve stenosis can lead to chronic pressure that will send us down this path to dilated cardiomyopathy. Okay, I know I made it seem like that was going to be the last thing, but I have one more thing I want to talk about in terms of left ventricular pathophysiology that leads to heart failure, and that's what's called restrictive, restrictive cardiomyopathy. Myopathy. All right, so we talked about cardiomyopathy before, so we know it's an illness in the muscles of the heart. But what does the restrictive part mean? Well, when you have restrictive cardiomyopathy, the walls of this ventricle end up not being super flexible. That can happen for a variety of reasons, one of which is you can get proteins that build up in the wall that make it less flexible. Right, so that leads to restrictive cardiomyopathy. And what's going to happen in this case is you're going to get a situation where the ventricle is not going to fill as well. It's not going to be as elastic. So you're not going to get as much blood coming into the ventricle, which means that you're going to have less blood to pump out of the ventricle. So that's how restrictive cardiomyopathy in the left ventricle can lead to heart failure. All right, guys, so I know we've talked about so much. Thank you for hanging in there with me. We have one more tiny little thing to talk about, and that's right ventricular failure. So everything we've been talking about up to now has had to do with the left ventricle failing in some way that causes the symptoms of heart failure. Well, what about the right ventricle? Is it possible that it can fail in all of these ways? And the answer is yes, it can. But most often what goes on is that we have pressure buildup from the left ventricle back into the lungs because of a problem here. When that pressure builds up back through the left atrium, through the lungs, back into these arteries, that pressure gets translated back into this right ventricle. So you have chronic pressure, chronic pressure in the right ventricle. Okay, and that chronic pressure is going to lead down this branch here. So it's going to cause dilated cardiomyopathy in the right ventricle. Okay, I'm just going to say DCP.
M because we said DCM down here, dilated cardiomyopathy. All right, and so the problems that you get when you're dealing with dilated cardiomyopathy on the right side have to do with the lungs. So remember the right ventricle is going to push blood up into the lungs and when this right ventricle starts failing you're not going to be able to push enough blood up into the lungs which is going to make it difficult to do gas exchange which in turn is going to make it difficult to breathe. So there's a whole set of pulmonary problems that come along with the right ventricular failure. Okay, But usually what happens is the right ventricle fails at the very end of a long progression of left ventricular failure that translates all of that pressure back onto the right ventricle. All right, so I know we've talked about so much here, but this is really important for you to see how complicated this subject is. There are all these different ways that the ventricles can fail. You can produce these big global changes in the ventricles so that you start having heart failure at rest even. Right? And you can also get situations like when you have some minor ischemia or even moderate ischemia when you're only going to feel the symptoms of heart failure when you exert yourself, when you ask the heart to do more than it's capable of doing. Right? So it's important to see how complex this system is and how many different things have to be working correctly in order for the left ventricle and, in this case, the right ventricle to maintain their health.